Shares of Robinhood are up in the pre-market. The online brokerage firm posted a first quarter revenue beat and its first increase in monthly active users in two years. It also announced 24-hour trading five days a week for several dozen ETFs and big stocks like Tesla, Amazon, and Apple. Joining us right now first on Squawk Box is Vlad Tenev. He is the CEO of Robinhood. And Vlad, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk first about what you're doing with this 24-hour trading for some ETFs and some stocks. Um, my yeah. guess is that's something you're doing because you want to make sure it's available for customers, but also a way to bring in additional revenue. Yeah, as we look at it, um, what this product allows is customers can now trade individual stocks as well as ETFs uh, 24 hours a day, five days a week. And that makes us the first U.S. retail brokerage to offer 24-hour trading of individual stocks. If, if you look at sort of the, the equity markets and how they've evolved, the trading hours haven't changed since the 80s. And in that time period, markets have gone electronic. So it's time to, to change that and to upgrade it and to make it more like software than a brick and mortar institution. And we're happy for what it allows our customers to do, manage their risk 24 hours a day and trade stocks and, and make investments uh, whatever time uh, opportunities arise. Let's talk about your monthly average users. They were up 400,000 sequentially, but you're still down to 11.8 million day average, monthly average users from 15.9 million in the year earlier quarter. What, what do you see just in terms of who wants to trade, who's willing to get on uh, onto the markets, who you think you can lure just in terms of growth? Because it's a lot tougher to do in a down market like we've seen. I've been very proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish in these challenging macro conditions. If you look back a year ago, there were questions about how Robinhood would do in a high interest rate environment. Obviously, we did quite well in 2020 and 2021 when interest rates were low and trading volumes were, were quite high. But if you look at the past year, we've diversified the business and now 50% of our revenue is net interest revenue. And along the way, we've continued to innovate for customers, not just with 24 hour market, but also mm -hmm. rolling out gold, which gives customers 4.65% interest on their uninvested cash with 2 million in FDIC insurance, which is very useful in this current environment. And our retirement product, which is the first IRA with a built-in 1% match. So um, in this environment, there are opportunities to provide value to customers. And we've been rolling out products that make a lot of sense and are, are quite useful given the, the market conditions. Net interest revenue, as you pointed out, was $208 million in the first quarter. That was up sharply. I think it was only $55 million in the quarter a year ago. Um, part of what you do also is loan out money to people who want to use it to buy securities. And, and that can be great for the customers. I just wonder, are you confident that these are all good loans and that you'll be repaid? We've been, we've been doing uh, this business line since close to the very beginning. Uh, you're, you're referring to margin lending. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a new thing for us. We have added uh, additional products for customers like stock lending, which allows them to earn extra yield uh, on on their stocks that they may be holding at Robinhood, which I think is also very useful to customers in an environment where <coughs> there's less trading and they just kind of want to want to hold on to their positions. And that product line, uh, we've seen really fantastic uh, increases of, and it it's now. Um, combined with another product we launched approaching the size of our overall U.S. equities business. So I think, um, yeah, you, you've seen perhaps other products become interesting to customers, but yeah. we, we also see a core group of active traders that, you know, are a little bit more sophisticated in 24-hour market with the ability to trade things like Tesla, Apple, and Amazon round the clock on weekdays um, is, is very, very useful to those customers as well. But how much are, are your, not only your number of monthly active users, but the number of transactions tied to a rising market? In the first quarter, um, look, markets did pretty well. But do you think it's, it's something that's sustainable, even if markets are down for the quarter? 
Um, I think that you, you'll you'll see things fluctuate quarter to quarter a little bit. Um, long term trends that we look at are net deposits into the platform. You know, your last um, your last guest was talking about all the outflows of the banking system. Well, Robinhood has seen inflows in Q1, um, 29% growth of inflows of customer net deposits year over year, um, which it was about 4.4 billion in Q1, one and a half billion uh, in March alone. So, you, you know, as a lot of financial institutions are seeing customers take money out, uh, we're, we're seeing customers bringing money in and yeah. that be rather strong. And but you're also seeing, um, yes. Oh, go ahead, finish, sorry. Um, and, uh, and you're also seeing increases in customer satisfaction. We've been able to drive net promoter scores of active traders up 30 points. And uh, all of our customers average net promoter scores up 20 points year over year, which we're incredibly proud of. Shows customers are trusting Robinhood increasingly in this uncertain environment.